you're gonna analyze deals very, very fast. Hi, it's Kevin A. Malsh, Pine Financial Group, where we work together so you succeed. You found us here on Facebook, you found us here on YouTube, please hit like, hit subscribe. We're trying to build an audience here. That helps us talk to more people and help more real estate investors just like you. Today I'm gonna to go over the different rules, the 1% rule, the 50% rule, and the 70% rule. Lions, tigers, bears, oh my. So all of these different rules, it's very confusing to some, especially newer real estate investors. So let's quickly go through those. What is the 1% rule? The 1% rule is a rental analysis primarily on single family properties. I guess some investors will use it up to four units. So one to four unit properties. The 1% rule is this. If you could rent the property for 1% per month of what you paid for, it's a good deal and you should buy it. Okay, so I'll say that again. If you could rent the property on a monthly basis for 1% of what you paid for it, it's a good deal. Now again, this is just a rule of thumb. There could be 1% rules that are not good deals. For example, I have properties in Memphis, Tennessee, and there's some challenging neighborhoods in this city. There's neighborhoods like this all over the country. I just happen to have some experience in Memphis. So let's say I buy a house for $25,000 or $30,000 and it rents for, let's say, $600 per month. Well, now we're at 2%, right? So that's based on the 1% rule. That's a fantastic buy. The problem is a ratio of maintenance to the value or purchase price is much, much higher. For example, a refrigerator for my $30,000 house in Memphis is going to be the same price as a refrigerator in a $250,000 house in Memphis or in Denver or any other place that I might own property. So one maintenance request, a refrigerator, for example, could wipe out one or two months of income on a lower income property or a low value property like those ones in Memphis. So keep in mind the 1% rule works fantastic if it's a pretty average, I'd say, market. If you're in a higher end market, you're gonna get a much lower than a 1% because the maintenance as a, a ratio of value is lower. And then in the more affordable areas, you're gonna to wanna to see a higher than a 1% rule. So just keep that in mind. Now, what's the 50% rule? Now, this one has some controversy around it. People do not believe it's true, but if you just search online 50% rule, you're gonna get inundated with information. And this is for more of the apartment investors. So if you're buying 20, 30, 40, 50 units at one time in one building, this is the rule we're looking at. And the rule says you're gonna take the gross scheduled rent, so this is before vacancies, and multiply that by 50%. So basically divide it in half. And then that's how you're gonna calculate your NOI, your net operating income. And of course, net operating income in commercial real estate is how you value it. You use that and the cap rate to come up with the value. So real simple, gross rents, cut it in half. That's all your expenses, 50% of expenses get you your NOI. That's how you can analyze deal extremely, extremely quick. And once again, if you're in the lower income areas, this is probably closer to accurate. If you're in a class B type building, maybe class A, obviously class A, but B, A, you're probably gonna see expense ratios of closer to, I don't know, 35 to 40, maybe a little bit higher percent. So that 50% rule would not work in that type of building. Okay, the 70% rule, this is what we as fix and flippers use constantly. The 70% rule is for fixing and flipping and it means if you could buy a property and rehab it, so your purchase and your repairs, and be at or below 70% of the completed value, the after repaired value, then it's a good deal, you should buy it. You're gonna analyze deals very, very fast. Purchase plus the repairs divided by value, and if we're at 70% or lower, it's a good deal. So that's the 70% rule. Leave me some comments below. What do you think? Agree with these rules of thumb? Disagree? What's your experience with them? Have any other real estate investor ratio rules of thumb that you could share with me or the other viewers? Please leave that below as well. And be sure to like us, subscribe, and check us out, pinefinancialgroup.com.